Let us know. Continue yes, our discussion. All right. So, any concerns so far regarding with this uh, slide? Wala po. All right then. So, let us now proceed to the next one. So, let us now talk about Ohm's Law. Okay. So, when we see Ohm's Law, it is the relationship between current, voltage, and then resistance. Okay. So, one thing that uh, might also come up with our mind when we see Ohm's Law is the formula. Okay. Or Ohm's Law formula, which is the B is equal to IR or I is equal to B divided by R. But when we see Ohm's Law, this one is the relationship of your current to voltage and to your resistance, okay? So that is the main definition of Ohm's law, not the formula itself. And it is discovered by George Simon Ohm, okay? So as you guys can see, Ohm came from his last name. So this is Mr. George Simon Ohm. And he published uh, a book in the year 1827 called The Galvanic Circuit Investigated Mathematically, which he discussed about the relationship of this uh, tree, okay, which is now called the Ohm's law. All right, so that's the history or the short history when it uh, when it when it comes uh, to Ohm's law. Okay, so Ohm's law states that the current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points. Okay, so voltage and current is uh, proportional with each other. So as our current goes up, our voltage goes up as well. As our voltage uh, goes down, our current goes down as well. Okay. So, yeah. And then introducing the constant proportionality, the resistance. So this is the constant proportionality, which is, you know, dividing the, uh, let's say, voltage or dividing the current. Okay. So the higher the resistance, the lower the voltage, the lower the current. The lesser the resistance, the higher the voltage, and then the higher the current. Okay? So that's uh, their relationship with each other. And as you guys can see, this uh, relationship is described with this formula. Okay? So we have a lot of forms with this formula. So it could be I is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So I is your current, and then B is your voltage, and then R is for your resistance. So just transfer this R or cross multiply, then you will get the other formula, which is B is equal to I times R. Okay. So if you also want to get the R, then just you know interchange those two. So R is equal to B divided by I. Okay. So you can get uh, any of those uh, variables as long as there's only one missing variable right so yeah we have already discussed this one so Ohm's law is i is a current where it's measured in amperes and v is for voltage or volts and then r is for ohms or the uh omega okay so the symbol let me just put that one omega oops So sorry, I've accidentally clicked this top chain. Equations. So where is that omega? Hmm. All right, so I cannot find the symbol omega in here. Anyway, so the symbol of omega is like this. All right. So I hope you guys are familiar with this kind of symbol. This one symbolizes ohms. All right. So are we clear with this one so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry for the ugly drawing, but this one is omega. All right, so here we're going to talk about the two types of circuit, which is the first one is series circuit. So when we say series, we only have one flow of electrons, okay? 
So when we see one flow, that electrons will not be divided whatever happens as it goes through from this starting point up to the uh, going back to the ground point. Okay. So as you guys can see, we only have one current or one flow of current. Okay. So let's see, this electrons passes through our resistance one, passes through R2, passes through R3, and then goes back to our uh, ground. All right. And for our parallel circuit, so when we see parallel, that is now where our circuit or where our current is divided into two or more. All right? So as you guys can see right here, yes, it's series up to this point or up to this node. But once it reaches this node, it will be divided into three. Okay? So some currents will go here. Some currents will also go here. And then some currents will also go here. Right, so if that is the case, then that is already a parallel circuit. So sometimes you call this one complex circuit, and then the other one is simple circuit. So when we say simple, it's a series connection. When we say complex, it's a parallel connection. All right. So who's new when it comes to series and parallel? Is there anyone here who's confused when it comes to series and parallel diagrams? Right, so I guess none since uh, there's a lot of subjects out there that is maybe have discussed series and parallel. Okay. And then we have here the combinational circuit or combination circuit wherein it is series and at the same time parallel. All right. So just take note that in the series par parallel circuit, the major part of this circuit is the series one. So as you guys can see, whichever or whatever is the first. Uh, type of circuit and then followed by the second type of circuit so the first one is the more dominant okay uh, part of circuit and then the second one is just the, uh say uh, there are parallels but only a little okay there are more serious connections than parallel connections and vice versa of course if we have parallel series then there's more parallel connections than series connections but in reality, this one is already a parallel circuit, so just a parallel. Once you saw a parallel connection, you know, we're generalizing such example as parallel, okay? Like this one is parallel, okay? No need to say that this one is series parallel. But for the sake of, you know, learning uh, what is the difference between series parallel and then parallel series, so whichever is the first one that is the uh, major, uh, circuit on that uh, schematic diagram. Okay, so here is the example of the series parallel. Okay, so we have series connection here. R four and R six. I mean, R five is series with each other, and then once you combine them, then they are now parallel with each other. And then R two and R three is also in series connection, and then your volts here, and then right here. So it's series. So as you guys can see, we only have two parts for your parallels. We have more series connections uh, in this example. Right? So, oops, there's a note here. Note that hyphenated term series parallel uses the word series first to emphasize the major circuit and the word parallel second indicate the minor connections. Okay. So I hope this one is clear to you guys. Whichever comes first, that is the dominant part or the major part, and then the second one is just minor connection. So are we clear so far regarding with this series parallel connection? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so you guys do not really have a question? Okay then, so let us now move on to the next one. So this is the opposite of the series parallel. So we have the parallel series where in parallel is the major one. And then uh, the last one, which is the series is the minor connection. Okay. So here's an example of parallel series uh, connection. So yeah, this one is composed of uh, one series connection outside. 
which is your volts, and then going here. But we have now here the parallel connection, your three parallel connections. All right, so this one has more parallel connections than series connection. Anyway, in general, again, series parallel or parallel series or whatever, this one is already parallel okay, to the exam. All right, so let's have an example, uh, a very simple example. So we have here a 30 ohms. 30 ohms resistors is connected in series with a resistor R okay, whose ohmic value is unknown. Okay, so yeah, we have the uh, resistors, which is 30 ohm. And then we have another resistors here, which is unknown. So if the current is 2 ohm or 2 amps, so this is your I or your current. When the circuit EMF, so your EMF here is the electromotive force, or in other words, this one is our uh, voltage source. So EMF is equal to 115 volts, or volts, or voltage source is equal to 115 volts. So the question here is calculate the resistance of the unknown. So the unknown here is the uh, variables R, or variable R rather. So if you're going to draw this one, all right. So of course the voltage source first, or we call that one E. So we have here the positive, negative, positive, negative. And then we have this connection, wherein we have your first resistor, which is 30 ohms. So when we say resistor, it's being represented by this squiggly horizontal line, okay? So this is your 30 ohms. Oops. 30 ohms. So this is 30 ohms. So I'll just use this symbol. And then another one, is the R, okay, or another resistor, but an unknown value. And then, of course, it will go back to the negative. All right, so we have the source here, which is equal to 115 volts. So it's 100. 115 volts and then we have a current okay that is flowing in our circuit so it's being symbolized by i is equal to 2 amps or 2a okay so we have the first resistance which is let's say r1 is 30 ohms and then r2 is missing and if the current is 2 amps so we have the current flowing which is 2 amps on this circuit so when the circuit uh, EMF is 1 between, so your voltage source is 1 between, which is this one. So calculate the resistance of the unknown. Okay. So the first thing that you need to do here is get the total resistance. Okay. Or uh, divide, divide it by 2 actually. So you can do that one. So we have here the uh, voltage divided by I. So how did we come up with that one? So initially, we have this formula, right? I is equal to V divided by R, or V is equal to I divided by R. So from those two formulas, you can come up with a formula wherein you're looking for the R total or the resistance. So R is equal to uh, V divided by I. Okay, so the same with this one. So just interchange two, two, uh, those two. You can also interchange Oops, V I R. So this one is incorrect, sorry. V I R. So one is I times R. Okay. So from here you can just transpose this one or cross multiply. Then you will get the same uh, expression where you, we have R is equal to V divided by I. Okay. So as you guys can see, uh, your voltage source is already given, which is 115. And then your I or your current is two ohms. Okay, so from there we can already solve the total resistance. So 115 divided by two is 
What is our answer? Fifty-seven point five. Yeah, fifty-seven point five. Okay. So since uh, this one is a resistance, so this one should have a unit of ohms. So you can use this one, or you can use the word ohms itself. All right. So any of those, those two are correct. Okay. So from there, we already know that the total resistance is fifty-seven point five. And the one that we're looking for is the R2 or the R. So just, uh, you know, because if we're going to get the R total, we have this equation, R1 plus R2. Okay, or all of the summations of your resistors in that circuit. And in, as you guys can see right here, we only have two resistors. So R1 plus R2 only. And the one that we're looking for is the R2. So R total is already given. So R2 is equal to RT minus R1. Yeah. So RT is already given, which is 57.5. And then your R1 is 30 ohms minus 30. So your R2 is equal to 27.5 ohms which is the same here. All right. So were you guys able to follow on how did we get uh, the answer right here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So let's now move on to the example number two. So we have here a 30 ohm resistance is connected in parallel with a resistor R whose ohmic value is unknown. Okay. If the total current taken by both resistors is 5.7 up, when the current circuit is uh, EMF is 140 volts, calculate the resistance of the unknown. Okay. So same, uh, not actually the same. So this one is 114, the other one is 115. Okay. But we're still looking for the R. But right now, we are now in connection with parallel, okay, not in series anymore. All right. So we have the source right here. Oops. Source, positive, negative, positive, negative, which is E. So this one is equal with 114, 114 volts. And then we have a parallel connection. So the first one is 30 ohms. And then the another one is missing variable, which is just R. Okay. And then we have here a current. If the total current is taken by both resistors is equal to 5.7. So it says your total current, okay, total uh, taken by both resistors is 5.7. So from there, at this point, we still have the total current, IT, okay, which is 5.7 amps. But at this node, let's say this one is your node A, okay, your IT will be divided into two uh into two currents so let's just say that this one is your i1 all right so i2 just call this one i2 and then the other one is i1 all right so from here we'll be having uh this equation so it is equal to i1 plus i2 all right so it is already given then all we need to do is look for the values of your I1 and then I2. Okay, but we have another hint here. We're in taken by both resistors is 5.7. I'll take the resistance in one. All right, so no hint. Sorry. Anyway, so from there, 
we need to find we need to find the current that is flowing on the I2. I mean I1. Okay. And then from there we will be able to solve what is the value of the I2. And then once we have the value of I2, then that's the time that we can solve for the value of your R. Okay. So for the I sub 30, okay. So going back to our formula, I is equal to V divided by R. So we have a voltage across. Uh, on this parallel uh, circuit, which is 114, and then another here is 114 volts. So that is the good part when it comes to parallel circuits. Uh, all of the uh, nodes right here, uh, the voltage source is equal with your, uh, let's say, V sub A, and then V sub B. So this one uh, has a voltage of 114 volts, and then the other one has a voltage of 114 volts. So that is a good part when it comes to using parallel connection. Okay. So I30 is equal to uh, V, which is 114, divided by 30 ohms. So we will get how many? So 114 divided by 30. So 3.8. We will get 3.8 milliamps. So this is the current that is flowing on our 30 ohm resistor. Now, since we have this uh, I sub 1 and then I sub B, which is 5.7, then that's the time that we can now get the value of I2. Okay, so from uh, this equation, then we can have another equation, which is I2 is equal to I T minus I sub 1. All right? And then IP is equal to 5.7. And then I sub 1, which is your I sub 3D right here, is, oops, where is that? 3.8, okay? Minus 3.8. So I sub 2 is equal to 5.7 minus 3.8. So I highly uh, advise you guys that you must have your calculator on your side since you're going to use that one uh, from time to time. Okay, so 5.7 minus 3.8 is 1.9 amps. All right? So from there, we already know the value of this uh, I sub 2. Then since we already have the value of I sub 2, then we can actually apply this kind of formula. Okay, I is equal to B divided by R. So from here, we can actually rephrase this one or this is formula to have another formula, which is R is equal to V divided by I. Okay, so since we're looking for the R sub 2, so let's just call this one R sub 2. So we will also use the value of your I sub 2. Okay, so uh, this is one tricky part. If you're looking for the voltage or total voltage, then you must have the I total and then the R total, okay? But if you're only looking for a certain a certain uh, current, then you must only use a certain resistors, okay? But since this part is in parallel, so your V sub 1, V sub 2, V sub 3 is the same with your V sub D. So this one will not change. And as you guys can see right here, we're only looking for the R sub 2. So since you're only looking for the R sub 2, then you should use the current that is flowing in here also, okay? Which is the I sub 2. So from there, R sub 2 is equal to, oops. R sub 2 is equal to, so your voltage is still the same. So again, this is your V sub A, V sub B. So all of them are equal in terms of uh, voltage. Okay, since this one is parallel. So R2 is equal to 114 divided by I sub 2, which is 1.9 amps. All right. So just solve that one and you will get 60 amps. So this is now the value of our second resistor. 
So, were you guys able to follow so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, let's see if we have the same answer. Yes. So, we have the same answer. So, what we did here is we look onto the value of your I uh, sub 30, okay, or your first amp here or current. And then from there, we can now look for the values of your I sub 2, which is 1.9 amps. And then from there, we can now solve for the values of your R sub 2, okay, which is 60 amps. All right, so let's have an exercise. So exercise number one, and see this trick it, figure 3.3a, okay, which is this one, has a 24 volt battery that delivers a current of 1.5 amp. So if R1 is equal to 3.4 ohms and R3 is equal to 6.2 ohms, calculate the ohmic value of your R3. So I'll give you guys three minutes, I guess. Oh yeah, two to three minutes. I guess that's alright enough for you to be able to solve, solve for the R2. So yeah. This is a recitation. I would like you guys to participate in this one. So whichever will be able to answer this one, then I'll give you a plus point. Last two minutes. Right, so very good, Mr. Samuel Santa Cruz. So the correct answer is 6.4 ohms. Okay, so his answer is correct. All right, so Samuel Santa Cruz, right? <clears throat> All right, so uh, I've listed already your name, and then I'll give you your class five points to our class record later. All right, so again, since we don't have enough time anymore, so we will just continue that as on part three. Right. So again, goodbye for now, and then see you guys later on on part three.